I'm slicing up another piece of this French bed pizza. It's absolutely delicious. You know French bread pizza, you love it. And guess what? There's a few tips and tricks that make this one extra special. Super fun, super flavorful. I think you're gonna love it. So let's make some. Recently I showed you how to make French bread and a great weeknight meal to do with it is French bread pizza. Because guess what? It hardly needs a recipe, but the great thing is you can have this in the freezer. My recipe makes two loaves, so store one in the freezer and you can make things like this on a weeknight really quickly. And what's great about pizza? It can please a lot of people, but also little tips and tricks can make a little bit of a difference. So while it's not in a complicated recipe, it can be one that just looks a good refresher sometimes. So I'm cutting it in half lengthwise, obviously, which you just wanna start slowly and keep working down. And the reason we use a French bread, American style, I should say for this, is because French bread, look at it, has the capacity to have these beautiful big pieces that you can slice up however you want. So there's nothing, you know, pretentious about it, it's super simple, and it has a great already bread layer that you don't have to pre-cook or anything, it's just ready to go. So what I wanna to do to start this though, is do a little thing, few things that make it, to me, a little bit better, make sure it doesn't get soggy or weighed down by everything we're gonna put on top. So to start, this gonna be a little bit of olive oil that I'm just gonna drizzle over the bread. Now, a French style bread like this, an American loaf, is just like a white bread, but it has that ability to really soak things in, which can be good on certain things, but on other things, you want it to maybe not soak in too much, but also hold some structure. So I have some olive oil. I'm gonna put just a little bit of a pre-Italian seasoning on it. So an Italian seasoning is a blend you can buy in a jar. It's a blend of sometimes rosemary and thyme and basil, and all these things actually work perfectly with a pizza. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on that. We're almost just like making an Italian bread here. A little bit of salt, so a little bit of seasoning. And we're gonna put this right in the oven. So I'm gonna let that olive oil kind of soak in a little bit in the oven. It's gonna crisp up, make a little layer that's gonna almost act as a barrier. So I'm chopping up my vegetables. Now I like to have my vegetables cook a little bit before I put them on a pizza. It's personal preference do what you want, but it's also gonna create our flavorful sauce too. So it's all gonna be combined in one. So I have some onion and some red pepper. I like the color of the red pepper. To me, it's a little sweeter than the green pepper. I don't use green pepper a lot to me, except when it's essential. So I have a little bit of butter over here and I'm actually gonna cook it in butter. For my sauces, I always like to put butter in them from the great Marcella Hazan. Um, it just actually does add a great rounded, more rich flavor to the sauce. I think it really just tempers it out too. So you can hear that it's just starting to cook. So I'm gonna let those kind of saute in there. Since it's a pizza, we're kind of making a sauce slash the toppings for it. I do wanna make sure I salt them just a little bit to kind of draw out some of their liquid. I'm gonna let those cook and then we'll keep building up on it. I have some minced garlic. Now, the pepper and onion are just beginning to cook. I don't want them to cook all the way through because we have other things to add here. So we're gonna add some garlic. Always add that towards the end. And a little bit of Italian seasoning just to flavor it up, but we're gonna add sausage too, so that will really flavor it. And we're gonna just stir that in to really kind of let the garlic just begin to open up and really bring out its aroma, which takes just a few seconds. When it hits that heat, and it instantly you just smell it, which I love. Now I have some Italian sausage. This has a ton of flavor in it. Buy one that you love. You can buy a spicy one if you want spicy. You can buy a sweet one. What I like about it is it has a great blend of spices and herbs in it. And we're just gonna let that cook now in this mixture. And this is all gonna go on top of the pizza. It's that perfect blend. So we're just gonna break up those pieces, let them brown all the way through, and then make a sauce out of it so it all just becomes one. So this mixture has been cooking. Now, if you feel like your sausage has a lot of liquid on it, you can pour it off. Otherwise, you can just put on some tomato sauce. So we're gonna put everything in one. We're gonna make a tomato sauce that just blends in with all these flavors, picks up on all those spices, and that's exactly what you want and just really marries with the sausage. To me, it just makes it more simple when you're working with that. So we're gonna let this just simmer a little bit. We're gonna prepare the pizza a little bit more and then we'll come together. So these toast in the oven, and you can hear, they just have a little bit of a crust on top of them. That's exactly what you want. And what I've been doing here is shredding some fresh mozzarella. A lot of people just slice it. I like it shredded only because it coats better and I think it melts even better. You don't have to, but I think it makes a huge difference. And what I wanna do is start with some mozzarella on these. And yes, fresh mozzarella to me is the key here because the flavor and the creaminess you're gonna get with this fresh, so much better than the not fresh, which is in those blocks. The blocks just don't have the flavor we're looking for here. And the reason I'm putting this on first, which seems kind of counterintuitive, is because I wanna create that layer underneath this. So think of like a deep dish style, maybe if you've ever had a Chicago style pizza, the deep dish will have cheese usually on the bottom and then so like meat and then sauce. 
but it's actually a really good idea because what that does is create kind of these levels, which is what you want. So we're gonna just spread it out. And this is gonna just you now go back in the oven, let that just melt. But first I wanna put on a little bit of parm. Again, it's that, it, we're just layering flavor on this. So some fresh parm is kind of like a seasoning at the end that's really gonna just bring out that flavor before we put all that sauce on top. So let that go right on top. We're gonna put this in the oven. We're gonna let it melt until it's just gooey, maybe browning just a little bit, and then we'll top it. So I'm putting the sauce on now. So these came out of the oven. You can see it just started browning that cheese. That's what I want. And don't feel bad if like, you know, this one when I cut it, it had a little bit of crack in it. Guess what? The bread sometimes crack. Don't feel bad about that. That's just what happens. So what I like about having the sauce and meat mixture is one, you can leave the meat out if you want to. Make this vegetarian, that's no problem at all. Or use a vegan cheese, no meat, and you can make this a vegan even dish. It really can work for whatever you're wanting. But with the sauce and meat combined, with the peppers slightly cooked and everything, with all that, they still, you know, are, can, you know what they are and they still hold their structure and their texture, but it's just a nicer way to kind of elevate it and make sure it gets everywhere. And so what we're gonna do too is not have a overly soggy bread, which I like. Now, don't get me wrong, the bread will soak in some of this and you want that a little bit. You want that kind of mixture of some of that sauceing in there so you can sop it up too kind of as you're eating it. That's the joy and the beauty of it all. So we're gonna just put this all the way to the edges. Now, I did put cheese underneath. That's not the only cheese. The cheese is gonna go on top here too. So I grated another mozzarella, and you can see it right there. And then it's just such an easy way to get it evenly on when it's grated, and it just will melt over this whole mixture. See how it just kind of is like a, it's not the easiest cheese to grate, but it honestly goes better than you think. And it gets kind of crumbly as you're doing it. So you just wanna get it all over, let it kind of come down the sides there, and don't feel bad throwing them back on if they do fall off but just put it all over. What I like about this is, instead of having to make a pizza dough, it's a lot quicker. So this is great for kids because they can like fully assemble all of this. Now I use a bench scraper a lot to get the extra cheese because otherwise it kind of wants to stick to a board or something and I don't want to waste that. So I'm going to put that right on here. Perfect on top. So any of that little cheeses that fell right there. So I'm going to put this back in the oven. We're going to let it really just melt until it's all coming together and bubbly. We're gonna slice it up. Guys, it's gonna be really good. So this is baked, gotten all bubbly and brown and beautiful. That's really the point. You wanna let it cool just a little bit, but it's really at this point just a slice and serve. I mean, that's kind of the point of it, is to bring it over to a surface that you can slice it on, and then you can just serve it up. Now, there's really no good or bad way to do that. You just have to go right through it you know, kind of have to just like believe, <laughs> believe in yourself and just do it. Like, don't worry about, it. is it gonna be perfect? What if it's gonna be messy? It is gonna be messy, kind of. That's the perfect part of it. So I love how it just has everything. Look at that. You got that beautiful bread on bottom. You got all that sauce and the meat that was tipping to one side on this one, but guess what? No one's gonna complain about that. That's exactly what you want. So then you can just serve it up and it's already gonna be good bread, you know that. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. It's everything about a pizza you love, but there's something special about that double cheese layer. The cheese underneath, <laughs> the cheese on top, and then that beautiful, delicious sauce meat mixture in the middle, which I use an Italian sausage, which has a lot of flavor, punchy, and then that glorious kind of soft bread underneath. That mixture is perfect. It's almost like a focaccia type bread underneath with that Beautiful, look at how it like holds up to that. And it really holds up to the topping so you can eat each one like a piece. That's the beauty of it, beauty of it. So what do I hope you do with this? I hope you have pizza night. For us growing up, it was always on Friday nights, but for you, it can be any night of the week. Whatever weeknight you want, you can make the toppings fit your family, fit yourself, fit your friends, whatever you want. But most of all, share this video around. When you share these videos, it helps everyone else see food is possible and doable and easy to do at home. If I can do this, anybody can do it and it can be delicious. That's the point. Check my website, wiseguide.com, for this recipe and all my other recipes. They're all on there. Until then, have a pizza party. You're gonna love it.